to crunch it. Oh yeah, he got, he got, he gobbled that down like nothing. But I need to share something with you that impacted me a lot yesterday. Absolutely crazy. I love it. It's one of my favorite steaks that I've produced this year, to be totally honest with you. Your life is so sad that you're trying to project your sadness and your unhappiness onto somebody else. I don't want to see anyone go through that. So again, I'm always here for you guys. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. I'm out right next to my guy, RJ, here, and I think that he's about ready to eat. And I've got the perfect thing for him. Actually, someone dropped by a few turkeys. And after all, Thanksgiving is coming up. So let's go ahead and just kind of butcher this up a little bit to the best of my ability again, because I'm not exactly a butcher. And uh, go ahead and see if RJ wants a little early Thanksgiving dinner. All right, let's go ahead and see if RJ wants to eat. Come on, buddy, you want some food? Come on, bud. Come on. Over here, bud. Up here. Up here. Up here. Up here. There you go, buddy. Oh, yeah. I think RJ's ready for Thanksgiving. He is definitely ready. Oh! The bones are crunching. I tell you what. He's at that size where I wouldn't want to get bit by him. As a matter of fact, I got an idea for a future vlog I'll share with you guys sometime soon about how it would feel like if you got bit by him. I don't want to spill any beans to this one, but let's go ahead and just keep on feeding him. Come on, bud. You want more? Come on. One more, come on, over here, over here. Come on, up, 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 up. There you go. It's absolutely awesome. I tell you what, I love it. And I really do appreciate the fact that someone dropped off some turkeys because hey, everyone gets a nice free meal and uh, he's loving it. Just look at that. Thing. Oh, you just hear those bones are crunching. RJ is getting big. He is amazing. Let's go ahead and just keep on feeding him. He's not wasting any time just devouring this turkey. I tell you what, it's going to be a big meal for RJ for sure. Look at him. He's just loving that turkey wing. Oh my gosh, he's playing with it. Again, this is good for them, you know, it gets them a lot of calcium, there's that bone in there. Uh, not just the normal like crocodile chow or little meat that we give them. Giving them whole animals like this oftentimes really helps, you know, the whole parts anyways of animals. So, uh, that's, uh, it's awesome to have a pet alligator. We actually have the turkey net from that turkey and uh, I remember last time I gave it to Elvis, he absolutely loved it. So let's go ahead and see if Elvis wants some turkey neck. Come on bud, you wanna come out? There you go, bud. Oh yeah, he got, he got, he gobbled that down like nothing. <laughs> he loves it. You ready to go again? Okay, last piece, Elvis. Last piece. There you go, buddy. <laughs> I would say the turkey was definitely a success. Now the big question is, should I try a turkey on Ivy the Anaconda and Lucy again for Thanksgiving? Let me know in the comments. You remember how it turned out last time, but maybe Ivy will like it, maybe a little bit smaller turkey. Let me know what you guys think. So listen guys, I try not to rant and I try not to get into negative things, but I need to share something with you that impacted me a lot yesterday. And uh, it starts with yesterday when we were open at the Reptarium. A kid came in, 15 year old, with his parents and uh, he had been getting cyber bullied, okay? Now let me just back up here and tell you why this affects me so much is that, you know, I've been the target of a lot of online attacks, right? And I don't, you know, I'm okay. And I'm gonna talk about that as it is. And I'm gonna try not to make this too down, but this is something that really affects me. So regardless, he actually has a YouTube channel, has about 2,300 subscribers, which is awesome. He's also autistic, very smart, unbelievably smart, does YouTube videos on computers and stuff, stuff that I don't understand. And obviously he has a pretty decent following, right? Well, his parents came in, obviously they love reptiles, he follows me, all that type of stuff, but he was really getting cyber attacked. I mean, to the point where there were threats, there was horrible things, they found his home phone number and were calling his home, stuff like that. And I tell you what, they came in and they just wanted advice. And it's something again that impacted me so much that I wanted to share this with you and kind of give you guys my thoughts on this and 
kind of advice if you're going through something similar. But before I get too deep into this, I did want to share something really cool, which was that white snake kind of surprise clutch that I cut a few days ago. Well, they hatched out. Let's go ahead and look at those and give you guys the reveal. So I know a lot of you guys have been asking about what happened to that clutch with those white snakes in it? Well, they finally have crawled out of the egg and I'm going to show you the results for sure. This one happens to be a fire pewter. So it's a fire, it's a pastel, and it's a cinnamon. And again, the pairing on this was actually a pewter bee, which is a pastel, a cinnamon, and a spider. And then the male was a dragonfly, which is a pastel, a fire, and a pinstripe. So this is the pastel, fire, and cinnamon right here. And then of course we have just a little fire cinnamon here. So the same type of animal, just minus the pastel. Really beautiful. That fire really changes things up. This is a really cool animal here. This is a, just a firefly, which is a pastel and a fire, but a really, really blushed out one. And that's the thing that's interesting about this clutch is that a lot of the animals are really great examples. So for whatever reason, they are really beautiful kind of faded out animals. This happens to be a fire pewter pinstripe. So again, it's a pastel, it's a cinnamon, it's a fire, and it's a pinstripe. So you can kind of start to see how the patterns are kind of getting through it. But listen, this is where it got interesting right here. This is one of the white snakes. Remember, they looked really white in the egg. Well, they weren't completely white actually. So they're actually got just a little bit of pattern. They're a white snake with just these little black bars. Absolutely crazy. I love it. It's one of my favorite snakes that I produced this year to be totally honest with you. And I think that what this is, is a super pastel, cinnamon, fire, spider, possibly a pinstripe. I'm not sure if there's pinstripe in there or not. And that's the funny thing when you start getting into a lot of mutations is that you're not 100% sure. I've never seen anything like this before. I've seen similar type of mutations and I've not seen them white with little black bars like this. I think it's crazy cool. I mean, this thing is a dream animal for sure. So for those of you guys that were interested, like what happened with those white snakes? This is what they turned out. They weren't leucistics, they weren't anything else, and they seemed to be completely cool and fine and absolutely beautiful. I love the way these guys turn out. Let me know in the comments if you were as excited about the results as I was. Not every clutch that we hatched this year we caught on film in particular. This was a clutch that honestly just kind of all hatched. They hatched a few days early. And that's the interesting thing about ball pythons and all snakes for that matter. You can eat the exact same temperature and some clutches will hatch a little early. Some clutches hatch a little bit late. Regardless, this was actually a pinstripe specter that was bred to a fire yellow belly. Now the yellow belly in special actually produced what they call a super stripe and this happens to be a little super stripe here really cool what they call an allelic animal so again when the yellow belly and the specter get together it's the same thing with highways and pumas and stuff like that but absolutely beautiful this just happens to be a normal super stripe but again we actually have the fire gene in here so there's a lot of things going on with that and you can see this is just a normal fire ball python right here the again the dad was a fire yellow belly and that yellow belly is what triggers the super stripe, right? Now this one right here happens to be what the specter and pinstripe mix is. Now if this had yellow belly, it would then be a pinstripe super stripe, but it doesn't have yellow belly. It just has the pinstripe and the specter. And then on the flip side, you can start to see what goes on here. This is actually a fire pinstripe yellow belly. And that thing is absolutely gorgeous. Again, if this had the specter gene that the mom had in it, then you would get into the super stripe with the allelic animal. I know it's a little hard to kind of follow, but that's how these things kind of work. And again, a couple little pinstripes here, uh, another little pinstripe right here. This might be a fire pinstripe because it kind of has that fire look. Once it sheds out, I'll have a much better understanding. Uh, these guys are actually just normal yellow bellies right here. So they don't have any other gene, single gene yellow belly that again, triggers the allelic reaction with the super stripe and then we finally hit this beautiful little monkey right here this thing is a ripper this is actually a fire pinstripe super stripe so this is all the genes mixed into one an absolutely incredible animal so it's got the fire it's got the pinstripe it's got the specter and it's got the yellow belly in it. and together with the allelic reaction that makes a super stripe it makes this unbelievably beautiful snake back to the cyberbullying line listen to me first off i want to put a link in the description to his youtube channel go show him some love tell him how amazing they are and i'd like to hear from you guys if you're ever dealing with this now let me just start by saying if you have an opinion 
it's okay to share that opinion in the comment section. I'm gonna to be totally honest with you. I've been on YouTube for 12 years. I watch videos every single day and I watch a lot of videos I don't agree with. I still personally have never written a negative comment on any video ever. If I don't like a video, I just click off it. I don't feel the need to tell them that I don't like their video. But with that said, if you don't like something about me, it's okay, you can say that. You can say, hey Brian, I think you should do something better if you have an opinion. Constructive criticism is great and I'm always happy to listen to it. The thing that where the line gets blurry it's a lot of times people think that they're giving you constructive criticism, but it starts with a line like, you're an animal abuser and this is why. Well, that's not constructive criticism. That's just an attack. And what I'm saying is that this kid was getting personal attacks against him. That's not right, guys. That is when you cross the line. When you go from being like, I'm going to be a keyboard warrior to trying to ruin people's life. He was literally changing his content per the types of threats he was getting. And that's not good. That's just, that's unbelievable. What basically you have to understand is when you're that person, if you're that person, what it is is your life is so sad that you're trying to project your sadness and your unhappiness onto somebody else, right? So it's not them that you have a problem with, it's you that you have a problem with. And that's what you have to understand. Now listen, I personally have dealt with this type of thing. And I'm not saying that criticism against me is wrong. I'm not saying all criticism is wrong. Certainly I do things that people don't agree with. And that's fine. My point is, is that I struggled with this for a long time. So when he came in and talked to me about this, and you got to remember, I'm an adult, people. He's just a kid. He was literally like thinking of suicide at one point. That's the type of thing that happens. So when you're on that keyboard and you're ready to fire off that comment, think about how you're going to affect someone's life. Because listen, that's not right, people. You got to get right with yourself. And I think the online world has just kind of developed to where it is kind of a cesspool of people that can say anything behind their keyboards because there's no, because they know that there's no, what, where am I? because there's, because they know there's reaper, because they know there's no repercussion for their actions because of the anonymity of the internet. So here's my advice to you. If you're getting cyber bullied or people are kind of taking advantage of you or even in person for that matter, remember number one, that you can't put value in what other people think of you that don't even really know you. And what I mean by that, and this is very difficult, is that you can't put value in somebody's opinion of you that really only sees you online and doesn't really know who you are. The value needs to come with your close friends, your family, people that actually know you. And this is the hardest part, is that if you don't put value in the people that hate on you online, you have to also not put a tremendous amount of value of people that love you online. That doesn't mean you can't enjoy and appreciate people's support, because I certainly do. But the fact is, if you start saying, well, I'll listen to the people that love me, but I won't listen to the people that hate me, it becomes kind of a blurry line. So the big thing is to somehow realize that it's great to have support, it's great to have people say great things about you, but you have to understand that can't define you as a person. Listen guys, I'm not gonna lie to you. I struggled with this for a long time. When I was being kind of hated on by a lot of people online, it got to a point where I was depressed. I was unsure who I was, and I started putting those values that people were projecting on me onto my life and I had to learn how not to do that. So again, if you want to do social media for a living, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, you know, TikTok, whatever the case may be, you have to realize that you have to somehow mentally get into a position where you can understand that when people are doing that, it's their problem, not your problem, right? And I know it's really difficult, but in this case, it really hit home to see a kid that was obviously a very bright kid that had a big future that was helping people through all his videos, literally thinking about stopping and really even thinking about potentially suicide. So again, I just wanted to give you advice if you're going through bullying or cyber bullying remember that it's their problem and to make sure you don't ever let people drag you down like that because that's what they want. They want you to be drugged down, right? If you stop doing videos or you start feeling down because of what they do, they're winning. Don't let them win. And hey, I'm going to tell you just like I told him last night, if you have an issue, please reach out to me or anyone for that matter. And we are always there for you and never let them win. You know, again, I'm going to be honest with you. I normally don't talk about this type of stuff, but it really hit home to me last night and I thought I had to get this off my chest because you know I know there's a ton of people that are dealing with the same thing that I've dealt with in the past and that he was dealing with now and I don't want to see anyone go through that so again I'm always here from you guys and if you're one of those people that are writing those negative comments just think about trying to get happy with yourself rather than putting it on to somebody else because if you're watching a video and you're so upset that you're gonna say something horrible to people that's something that you have to deal with yourself and listen guys just be kind to somebody like I always say.
in the end guys I don't mean to preach you and I hate to actually bring up topics like this it was just something that I was really passionate about and listen when you're doing social or whatever you're doing you know do it for you do it for fun you know don't do it for the attention don't do it for affirmation don't do it for any of that thing and yeah you can listen to people and like I said take constructive criticism and uh, and hopefully guidance from people because really people that will support you they might tell you when you're doing something wrong to try to make you do better not to try to cut you down and so on like that but don't ever put Put your own self-worth and what other people think like that in the meantime just do it because you love it you know I make these videos for me as much as I make them for you guys to be honest with you I want to be happy with this vlog I want to look back this is my journal that I'll be able to look back 20 years from now and share with my grandchildren or whatever so don't let it bother you and again I'm sorry that I had to bring up this topic I hope it reached some people and for the people that are watching just because they want to see animals hopefully you still enjoyed the animal part and we'll be back to our normal vlog tomorrow again guys sorry for kind of ranting it was just something I was really passionate about I hope that you guys don't mind and you enjoyed the rest of the kind of positivity in the vlog and I hope that someone out there took a message from this both on the negative side and on the positive side always just keep doing what you're doing and you'll be completely fine if you enjoyed this video here's a little more upbeat video over here here's a playlist that I think that you will absolutely enjoy over here you can subscribe also while you're over there hit that notification bell so you know when I upload a video have a wonderful day be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow